Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me on another gaming interview. I've caught up with Barth Aaron, and today we're talking about harmonization in the gaming industry. And I know this is a concern for some affiliates out there because as we move toward regulation, uh, you know, we're looking at, you know, licenses across Europe and the UK, but even here in the United States, uh, iGaming jurisdictions are licensing people on a state-by-state -state basis. We've seen this already with some affiliates looking at wanting to become uh, licensed to operate in New Jersey. And New Jersey takes this very seriously. And, and the concern, sir, is that an affiliate who wants to do things the right way is going to be uh, burdened with uh, all these regulatory fees and having to be licensed in every single jurisdiction. And boy, wouldn't it be easy if there were harmonization across these jurisdictions and we could just get one license to operate in all these states? Uh, that would be the nirvana of uh, gaming regulation. Unfortunately, uh, we're not there and we're not really close to being there. There have been some steps made. Uh, there is a uniform, it's called a multi-jurisdictional personal history disclosure form. There is a uniform called multi-jurisdictional business entity disclosure form. So there is one form that a number of regulators subscribe to, but you still have to fill out that form for each regulator, each jurisdiction you want to get licensed in. You still have to apply to each individual jurisdiction. Now, there is a system that exists for gaming equipment, and there are a couple of gaming labs, uh, GLI is one, Gaming Laboratories International, or BMM is another, where you can submit uh, an electronic device and get an approval from the gaming lab, which will then submit their report to each jurisdiction and the jurisdictions will approve the equipment based upon the recommendation of the lab. That would be a wonderful solution for licensing, but we're not there yet. There is an organization of gaming regulators. Uh, it's commonly called IAGAR. It's the International Association of Gaming Regulators. Uh, and their current president, uh, uh, Paul Newsom, is very interested in trying to get there. Whether we m make it or not, uh, uh, we've been in this business outside of Nevada for about 40, 45 years now, uh, and we're still working on it. So it's, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be a process. Some good news is that there is some technology out there that eases the burden. It doesn't mean that you don't need that license from each jurisdiction, but there's technology that can coordinate the information that's provided and required from each of the jurisdictions. Uh, if you take a look at what each jurisdiction needs or requires, it's uh, basically the same information. So an individual can create a database, and there are, there are software systems out there to do this, can create a database and then create the individual license applications for each jurisdiction where they want to apply and do it in a very efficient manner. Again, that doesn't solve the question of uh, applying in each individual jurisdiction, but it does make more efficient the, the process of that application. Now, there are also some systems uh, in place that uh, make the investigation a little bit more efficient. And currently, uh, there's a product uh, that's in use in Indian country in the United States. Uh, it's called Tribal Track uh, or Vendor Vault. Uh, one, one is for employee licenses, the other is for vendors like slot machine manufacturers uh, or the other associated equipment manufacturers that need to be licensed. Uh, where the tribes, uh, the tribal gaming commissions will uh, share information once they have verified the information that they need to issue their license, they will enter that into information into a database that's available for other tribes and the second or subsequent tribe can then go to the database and either accept at face value that the information's been verified or at least use it as 
uh, an element in their investigation to say that now we, now we have a second verification. We're going to look at it ourselves, but we have a second verification. So there are a couple of steps that are, ta that are being taken towards that goal of one application and I'm licensed, uh, which we would all love, um, but we're a long way away. You know, I was going to uh, mention the uh, tribal gaming aspect because I had, during the uh, panel session in there, they had mentioned that tribal gaming was actually leading the way with harmonization, so to speak, with some of the innovations that they had come up with. But I also heard uh, a representative from a, a regulated uh, jurisdiction here in the United States give some reservation about harmonization because they were afraid of liability, not necessarily financial liability, though. Yeah, there's, there's the concern that, first of all, understand, or we all understand, that gaming is one of those sin industries. Uh, so for whatever reason, and since I've been involved in the industry for over 35 years, I don't understand this because it's an industry, it's regulated, uh, but it's also operated by very legitimate people and, and uh, companies. Uh, so I don't quite understand why uh, there are people that take the view that uh, it's a sin industry, it's gambling, and gambling is evil, so it has to be treated a little bit differently. Uh, it is no more evil than... Uh, 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 tobacco than uh, marijuana uh, or any of the other uh, things that people think of as the sin industries and they're all le those are all legal and regulated and properly operated just like gaming is properly operated. Uh, you see and hear of very few incidents in gaming where the licensee does something that's that's really wrong. Uh, there are a few, but there are a few in every industry. So, um, but now I can't remember my point. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let me let me uh, kind of wrap things up with this because I was I was listening to what they were saying in there. I was listening to people that were for harmonization, and then some of the jurisdictional regulators that said, "No, we don't." We don't really see that ever happening. What about some form of hybrid system to where there were, say, 95% of the questions on these applications is standardized. Uh, so instead of it being cost prohibitive for affiliates, uh, wouldn't it, or, or anybody else for that matter, wouldn't it be uh, easier if, say, there was a standard national, whatever you want to call it, license with this 95% of stuff, and if the jurisdictions then wanted to alleviate some of their concerns with a shorter, less, uh, less expensive process, then they could just kind of piggyback off of it. Okay. And that is a possibility. If you take the very basis of gaming regulation is the game has to be fair and the two, the two aspects of gaming regulation are fairness to the customer, the, the gambler, and making sure the state gets its taxes. If you boil it down to the very basics, that's, that's what gaming regulation is all about. And you understand that there are certain aspects of, of uh, the business that really don't have a lot to do with the game. So. The history is in New Jersey, uh, people that worked in the, uh, the kitchens of the casino hotels, the housekeepers in the hotel originally needed a license. And slowly but surely, they, it was understood that they did not need a gaming license to work as a housekeeper because they had nothing to do with the game. When it comes to affiliates, depending upon their relationship to the game and the security of the game. So maybe wh whoever makes the felt on the table, uh, there is some relationship to the game. Whoever makes the chairs, however, what's the relationship to the, to the security of the game? So there is an avenue to say, 
we don't need the full license. We just need an associated license or an affiliated license, which should be a shorter investigation, a smaller application form, and certainly a smaller uh, application fee, an investigative fee. That would uh, be great news to, I know, a lot of people out there, a lot of affiliates out there who are just chomping at the bit to get into this uh, new burgeoning American market. Of course, we still have to worry about the Department of Justice, but that's a whole nother interview. Mr. Aaron, thank you so much for coming on with me. Thank I, you for having me. I appreciate, appreciate your insight. Thanks.